Hello, this is Backdrop Designer. I'm going to show you how to make your own brushes. Um, so what you want first is to use black for the background, which can be cut out or turned into transparency later. So I'm just going to jump to set 5 and go for the square here. Just right click this black colour. And if I uh, alt click here actually and make sure I've got pure black, just right click that again. And this is going to be the kind of work area. So I'm scaling up quite big. So that's going to be my brush size. Right, so I'll put that down. That's going to be turned into transparency later. So I want to start painting on, on this. So let's see what I've got. I've got a whole bunch of shapes here. I'm just going to go for this one and I'm just going to make this all blue. So I'll alt and right click to make everything blue and you can see I can take away some tones here. This is actually designed for a window frame but it will do for this. Let's just say I wanted to make a kind of, I don't know, kind of shape like that. So I'm painting in blue, rotating with E and R keys. In a mountain shape. See, there's a little bit of darker tones in there that will become transparent. So I just want that main shape and you can always paint in black again. It's kind of like the eraser due to the way the shaders work. There's not an actual eraser here, but so there's some grunge. It's got a little bit of fall off. So I'm going to press X to flip horizontally and if you want it to flip and rotate just make sure you do flip rotate. Uh, y to flip that way, rotate it around and that's it's got that side. So I'm using a combination of X, Y and the flip rotation or E and R to rotate like that. So I'm putting a few of these down. Let's see, I can change some of these tones. Let's see if there's any difference in here. Not much. Right. Uh, let's say I want to bring in the second tone. That's going to be blue plus uh, red, which is this color here. So I'll just right click that, Alt and right click, and that's basically additive. It means we retain the blue values plus some red tones if we want that. So I'm going to paint the the right hand side of this kind of mountain shape. Let's see, there's another grunge here I can use. Bit of a different shape. And let's have a look in here. Flowers, leaf and shape, there's some nice shapes in here. I can use I'm just five for a little bit of transparency. Grab some of these at random to knock in some interesting forms. Okay, now I want to use this side for a different tone. So it's going to be blue plus green, which is giving me the cyan. So right click with Alt. Uh, I'm going to go back to the grunge, scale them up. Zero for full opacity. So you see, I, I've got this kind of two tone thing happening. So green and blue is going to give me the base plus that. A bit more grunge here. If I paint in white, it's basically going to give me all the tones. Uh, but I'll just go for that for now. And I want to erase some other parts. So I'll go to Leaf and Shape. And I'm just going to use this one. And then Alt and right click for black. And now I can kind of erase some parts to make a more interesting shape. Don't worry if it comes out there like that. It's a good idea to have texture filter off for this as well. So 
put that that way. Scale up. Let's, uh, let's make a few little marks up here. Flip that, rotate it. Okay, so that's going to be our shape. We're going to capture that. So we'll just use the capture brush and just need that area we use. Let's call this temp one. And then control backspace to delete all of this. And now we've got this brush. I want to reset everything. Uh, let's turn this back to original tone and take away the black tones. And we're just left with what we need here. Now I do want the base to be blue, just so that we don't get a fade to black. And yeah, let's just right click that. That should be good enough, I think. I'm just gonna check that. So if I just to put that down like so, I can also customize the colors. Let's just right click for grey. Now, anything that was blue is going to become grey. Anything that was red on the right, I can now make kind of brown colour. And then there, I can make like a yellowish tone. And that's me now got a brush that I can use to make a kind of mountain range type thing. Okay, so I'll just clear all that and I'll use the eye level factor just to get the scaling. I'll change eye level adjust so it's a bit bigger. That way we get from small to big when we go beyond this line. I'm just going to use that flip. I don't want to flip actually, I just want to wear these in. And let's say I just want these, I can take away these two tones and just be left with that. And I just want this one. same here helps for the edge that sound that you can hear is my GPU fan not my GPU my PSU fan uh, being a bit broken if you can hear that and it stopped so I've got this kind of mountain now and what I want to do is go back to the original colors of all of this. So I can actually click preview and put all the back to original, all of that back to normal apart from black. And I've got this new mountain now, it's kind of a mix and grab that one. Control backspace. I'm going to turn off high level factor and just control it manually. But now I've got some mountains. <clears throat> Bring in the new tones. Let's choose one of these. So we'll just left click. And you see when I bring in black, nothing happens now because it's completely treated that as transparent. And now I can lay in some mountains. look a bit detailed for mountains but it just gives you an idea of what you can make so that's a new brush created now creating trees is a whole lot nicer because you can basically just choose a trunk choose a base choose some branches start laying these in. Now I did make some branches before as well. I think I might still have not really but <clears throat> you can slowly down the new trunks and things. Let's put that behind. Kind of 
make it look like another branch. Right, this one. And I can even come up here. And if I turn that back to original color. And make a whole new little branch set. Let's go for something like that and grab this new branch and bring in the new color. And that's me get a branch I can use for this. I can undo those last four steps. Now I've got nice so we can branch detail and even take away some of these tones a bit, mute them down. So just scaling with the mouse wheel and E and R keys it feels quite intuitive. And I put one at the back here just to help that shape. Let's darken Tones a bit more. It's going to be the tree, and I can go for some leaves. So there's petals here, and there is also leaf shapes under here. You've got leaf and shape. Let's go for this leaf, and let's grab some green tones. And you can see. I've got a nice leaf here, but I don't want to plot all these down one by one, take too long. So what I want to do is bring in the uh, random scale and a little bit of rotational range down here. Right, and now when I click, I'm going to get some slightly different things happening. If I want to be quick with this, just hold down shift and just start moving around. Let's bring even more rotational range in. See, I'm painting behind now, but I just want to move to layer 12 and brighten it up a little bit. Just like they're catching a little bit more of the light. And even more. You can hide some of the little bits here and there as well. some grass to the ground so there should be some grass ones down here so I like to control click just to get a random choice of these when I start painting with them let's make this one much more green and maybe not as much of that in there I still have rotational range I'm going to bring that down a bit and Let's start laying in some grass. I can hold down shift and just paint around. And it'll paint lots in there. And again, I just want some that are kind of highlighted. So break them up a bit. Maybe not too much. So like that. And that's you've got a tree asset. So to get that, just capture it. And it's going to send that file to your custom brush folder, even in the demo version. New tree. So it's got that tree, so I can do control backspace to clear everything. That also reclaims a bit of the frame rate. And turn down the rotational range. Turn off the random scale, and I can now kind of control this however I like. And Okay, so what happened there was the grass is still well, still selected, at least it thought it was, and it jumped back to that grass blade for some reason, but 
So we've got a whole bunch of trees in this layer and what I can do is click preview and let's say I want to make these all a bit more faded. I'm just going to alt click this guy but right click and then bring in some of this and it looks like I can fade them out now. Okay, when I'm happy with that, let's click bake, go to layer 13. Let's bring down that. In fact, we can bring it up a bit and that's so as we can put more in the foreground. But like there. They all look the same, so I just want to like every now and again just press X to flip. Just uh, do something like that. Go to layer 14, bring this right down even more. And that's that. Uh, now if I click on shifting and hold down the right mouse button, I can kind of look around. And if I switch on parallax mode, I can he even have this parallax effect. And if I press shift and P, I can increase that. And I now have an idea of what it might look in parallax. So I'm going to turn off shifting, turn off parallax, because I want to show you the scroller mode. It gives you a better idea of things. So if I press um, the scroller mode here, you see things start to shift. It switches on the wrap feature as well. And you can see how these trees would shift in front and behind each other. If I do want more distance between the layers, let's just turn off that scroller mode, I can cut uh, what's in this layer and move it further up and then this one I'll move it further down so the layers are more separated now when I do the, sh the scroller mode you can see how things change much more right I can even go back to layer 6 there bring in some of that fog and uh, let's just stop the scroller mode and I can put even more trees in the background here. So now again press X or use the random flip X, that will do it for you. Random scale. You can even bring a little bit of colour range into that and it will tint things a little. Let's go to layer 13 and bring away some of the fog. Make them a little bit bigger. I've got a little scrollable forest now. So I'll bring in a scroller mode and I can see how that would look as a parallax effect. So all of that uh, within about 10 minutes making your own assets and sprites that you can use in your game. Another cool thing you can do just to see how it would look is bring in the pixel mode. Just slide that to the right, turn off the CRT effect and you can see how that would look with an old school shader. Let's bring in the, the scroller mode. You can see how it gets a bit jiggly. The texture filtering helps that a little bit, but it's just a preview. Uh, really, it's going to look like that because of the pixels. Change it to any mode as well. Uh, that's pretty much it. So now I've got this asset new tree that actually is in the folder of custom brushes. I click on here, go to my custom brush folder, which you assign at the start. And you can see that's now there. I can copy that so that I never lose it, put it into process. You can see there's a whole lot of trees that I've made here. Uh, let's just call it something different because, let's copy it here first. Let's call it tree demo. One, cut that out and put it in here and that's now uh, protected it's not going to be deleted um, there's a nice branch there as well I could always copy that so I'll copy that put that in here as well oh it seems to be I'm using the same name quite a lot so I'll call this this branch I need to make sure if I'm going to use it again I just want to make a copy because it, that name's important. So I'll call this next branch. I'm going to cut that there and put it in process. Okay, and I've got everything that I need here. So what I can do is just clear the custom files. It's going to reset and 
you can see it's got rid of all the, the excess stuff here but what I can do now is go into the custom brushes, you see it's all cleared I'm going to process and grab ones that I've kept so for example that tree demo I've now got that tree back right so I'm going to put this down and show you what we can do here so I bring in the new color but I have to update auto update is going to update the last brush and I can go ahead and change some of those tones right so I'll bring it halfway I can make some changes make it darker for a nighttime scene or make it more yellowish to make it look like it's weathered. You can just mess around with these colours. They do affect things based on their tone coming in. There's a lot of red and green being used here, so you can see that I can change these and get some nicer tones from that. Uh, so it's all good, it saves the file right away. The demo works that way. Um, you can choose whether to have the texture filter on or off. And you can even clear that, put this down, switch it to pixel mode. And then for the sky, I'm just gonna like uh, pick this black and right click, that will make the sky black. Turn off the CRT effect. And I've now got a little pixel art version. I can play with the dither range, but it does affect the background, so just be careful with that. A few different pixel blending modes here as well. So if you do like the pixel art one, all you have to do now is save the image. So uh, export the image like that to the desktop call this pixel tree and you actually want to like process this in Photoshop so that you can remove the, the background color but I can also do it this way so if I load it in as a brush and clear everything off let's just make the background transparent let's come out of pixel mode so you see we've got this now I just want to use this button here to make it the scale correct again Right, and place it down with this one and do auto update and I just want to take away the black tones that's all I want to do is just do that so the auto update, I don't need to change this but I've now got the background removed so that's how you do that and if I save this image or I can grab it as a brush like so I call this pixel tree right and you can see that's now got the transparency built in so I'll just clear everything and I now have the ability to use the sky again let's just click that and I to bring the sky and you can see it does look a little bit transparent because of the 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 alpha that was in there but I'll just click a few times and then grab that one more time final pixel tree there's a few stages involved there but that's now good to go and if I go into that folder again where the, the custom brushes were you can see this is the final pixel tree I've got the tree demo and I want to save this one so I'll just copy it put it into processed and that's me got that forever I can now come back into backdrop designer and clear custom files and load in the little pixel tree from the protected folder it's a good idea to um, make that folder inside here and keeps everything safe uh, so final pixel is this one and you can see it's pure pixels now so it doesn't use the shader anymore it's an actual asset that you can use in a game didn't take long to make 
using all the, the custom brushes that are there. So that's how you can make art for your game. I hope you enjoy using this tool and I hope this tutorial was good. Feel free to leave a message at the bottom if you want more information or maybe another demo. Thanks for watching. Bye.